Uh, all right, what's up, guys? Brian here, and this is my WWE SmackDown Live uh, recap for last night's episode. Uh, so let's get right into it. Um, last week, of course, or, yeah, la yeah, last week, uh, Kevin Owens beat down Vince McMahon, uh, bloodied him, uh, gave you know, headbutted him, and then you know, super kicked him and gave him a frog splash. Um, question going into SmackDown is what kind of repercussions would Kevin Owens face from SmackDown Commissioner Shane McMahon? Uh, of course, last week Vince McMahon uh, made the announcement that at the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view uh, next month, Shane McMahon will take on Kevin Owens inside Hell in a Cell. So that's a huge matchup. But last night's SmackDown started off with Shane McMahon cutting a, a very um, emotional promo talking about what happened last week. He called uh, Kevin Owens a coward for what he did, um, saying that he is going to uh, rain down on Kevin Owens with uh, theory uh, from his fists. Um, Basically, just cut a, a promo building up, hyping up uh, what's been going, you know, his this whole entire feud that has, has been going on between these two. Um, like I said, it was a, you know, was a real good promo from Shane McMahon. Uh, we would then find out that Kevin Owens would be at SmackDown Live via satellite to give his side of the, uh, to give his side, um, and I'll get into that now. Uh, basically, Kevin Owens was live via satellite saying that, you know, he apologizes to the McMahon family, uh, and he apologizes to Shane McMahon because Shane brought this on himself, um, pretty much saying, and he also wanted to apologize for anyone that watches, well, Hell in a Cell, because he's going to beat Shane McMahon ser uh, very badly, all this stuff. Basically, play, doing the heel move, saying you know he's gonna, you know, try to be, try to be like, you know, trying to be a heel, saying oh I apologize, but I'm not really apologizing, but I'm I apologize for what I did, and I also apologize for what I'm going to do, and all this stuff. So that was pretty good. Uh, both of those you know um, prompt segments from Owens and Shane McMahon were were very good, you know, building towards this matchup. Uh, in my opinion, uh, we had Randy Orton. Uh, he start he uh, as far as matches are concerned, he started off uh, SmackDown in a match with Aiden English. Uh, this one was okay. Um, Randy Orton won, of course, with the RKO. Uh, afterwards, Rusev would come out, um, cut a promo on Randy Orton, talking about what uh, how Randy Orton beat him so quickly at SummerSlam. Um, that he made him, he made Rusev and Rusev's family uh, disgraced. All this stuff. He then he then would uh, challenge Randy Orton, saying that he is going to rip the fangs off the Viper. Uh, all this stuff. This led to a match being made between these two. It wasn't a quick match. It was a quick matchup. It wasn't a um, long match. Uh, Randy Orton would go for the RKO. Rusev would counter. Aiden English would get on the ring apron. Uh, Randy Orton would bump into Aiden English and then would turn into a big boot from Rusev. So uh, Rusev picked up the win in this one, uh, and that was pretty much it. So obviously nothing settled between these two. I could see them doing another match as as a Randy Orton looking for a bit of revenge. Um, so, but that's just my opinion. Uh, we had, uh, what else? We saw the return of Charlotte Flair. Of course, her father, Nature Boy Ric Flair, has had some medical issues over the last couple of uh, weeks and months. He's been, but he is on the men's. Look, he's getting better. Looks like he's getting better from photos that they've, they've, uh, they have been uh, online. He looks like he's getting better. So uh, that's good. Uh, she came out, thanked the, thanked the fans for all their prayers, their thoughts, being you know being with him. Um, 
she then uh, would be interrupted by Natalia, the SmackDown Women's Champion, uh, who basically came out and had somebody set up a, a stand with like a looked like a photo, um, and she would then talk about how you know about all the different women that of you know tried to you know break barriers. Uh, um, she then would reveal that the that the cloth that was over the picture was actually a picture of her holding the SmackDown Women's Championship when she won it at SummerSlam. Um, Charlotte would then say, would then make a challenge to her for that championship. Becky Lynch would come out, Tamina would come out, Naomi would come out. This would lead to Daniel Bryan coming out and making a fatal four-way match for the main event of last night's episode. And I'll get to that in just a moment. Um, with the winner facing Natalia for the SmackDown Women's Championship at Hell in a Cell. Uh, let's see, what else? We had the United States title on the line. Uh, this one actually did not happen. Uh, Baron Corbin attacked AJ Styles before the opening bell. Uh, this was going to be Baron Corbin challenging AJ Styles uh, for the uh, United States Championship. But like I said, Corbin attacked him before the bell rang. Uh, then Ty Dillinger, Ty Dillinger would come out and attack Baron Corbin, clipping him behind the knee. Um, and do damage on him. Then Styles would do damage to Corbin's leg, locking the calf pressure, and that was pretty much it for this. Um, Corbin, in a backstage interview, made it very clear that everybody he's going to get payback on 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 everybody. So um, I don't know if they're going to if they're where they're going with this whole situation. You have Dillinger. Styles, the champion, and Baron Corbin. Uh, personally, I, I think it's probably going to lead to some kind of triple threat match between these three, the way that they've been, you know, interacting with each other. I mean, you know, last week, uh, Styles gave Dillinger an opportunity at the United States Championship. Corbin got involved. Uh, now this week, you know, Dillinger costing uh, Corbin uh, his opportunity to, to even challenge for the United States Championship. So I could see them doing some kind of like that uh, as far as um, the, you know, a triple threat or some kind of that deal. Uh, so uh, what else? Uh, we had two other segments that I thought were a completely waste, a waste of time. Uh, we had WWE champion Jinder Mahal, uh, kind of like how he did last week, making fun of Shinsuke Nakamura, uh, showing pictures and saying, you know, uh, Nakamura, uh, Japanese people eat cats and stuff like that. It it was just dumb. The segment was just stupid. I'm sorry to say it. Um, I thought it was just dumb. Um, you know, he's, he talks about how uh, the uh, fans are going to turn on Nakamura. They're going to, because, you know, he's different. The same way they, they make fun of him for being different and all this stuff. It's like, it was just stupid, of course. You know, Nakamura and Jinder Mahal will battle for that WWE Championship at Hell in a Cell. But I, I just thought last night's segment was stupid. I really did. I'm sorry. Um, and I thought last week's was stupid, too. So, um, The other segment that I thought was, I don't know where they're going with it, um, was Dolph Ziggler once again coming out and making fun of different superstars. Uh, this time around, he made he came he came out uh, dressed up as Triple H, then came, went back uh, dressed up as Shawn Michaels, left uh, basically insulted both both guys, and then came out dressed uh, to the music of DX. Like I said, this is another segment that I thought was dumb. Um, obviously, I mean, you know, Dolph Ziggler. He's going to be on his way out pretty soon. So, um, you know, it, I thought, like I said, I, I just thought the segment was stupid. I'm not even going to, not even going to, uh, you know, waste any more time on that. Uh, we had uh, the new SmackDown Tag Team Champions, uh, the New Day. They were in action against uh, the Hype Bros. Uh, new Day won 
the Usos were at ringside on commentary. Um, I had, I had read that, that they were uh, thinking about making the Usos versus New Day inside Hell in a Cell for the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. Um, I don't know if that's going to be the case. Uh, I heard, I read that they they made it official, but they didn't. I don't know if they, I don't know if they announced it on last night's episode. I mean, I watched it, but I don't know if they did or not. Uh, so uh, let's, we'll have to wait and see if that happens. Um, and that brings us to the main event, which was that fatal four-way match to determine who was going to challenge Natalia for that for the SmackDown Women's Championship. It was uh, Becky Lynch, Tamina, Naomi, and Charlotte. Uh, I thought this matchup was really good. Uh, I, I thought it was a really good main event, a good way to showcase uh, the SmackDown Women's Division. Uh, all four brought their A game, uh, all four wanting a uh, shot at that SmackDown Women's Championship. But in the end, it was Charlotte with a big boot to, to Tamina that put her away and gave Charlotte the win. Um, and Charlotte it will be next in line for a shot at the SmackDown Women's Championship at Hell in a Cell. Um, so uh, she'll be challenging Natalia for that championship. So that should that's another huge matchup uh, that will be taking place at Hell in a Cell next month. Uh, but overall, my thoughts on SmackDown last night, um, with the exception of the uh, Ziggler segment, the Jinder Mahal segment, uh, I thought the Shane and Kevin Owens interview segments were pretty good. Um, I, I I don't know. I, I'm I'm you know I didn't think it was a bad show. But I also didn't think it was a good show. So I thought it was an okay, somewhat okay show last night. Uh, so uh, with that being said, uh, if you guys watched SmackDown last night, uh, let me know what you guys thought of it in the comments below. Um, and what do you think is going to happen uh, between Owens and Shane heading into Hell in a Cell uh, coming up next month? So... Uh, with that being said, this has been my recap of what took place on last night's episode of SmackDown Live. As always, I am Brian, and thank you for watching.